What's cracking, big dopes? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. Yesterday's video was the must own running backs, rounds four through six, the mid round running bikes. Today, we are looking at mid round wide receivers and pass catchers, those sticky fingers, the Twitter gods of the football field. If you've missed any of our must own videos, they are must watch. You must watch the must owns. We did running backs rounds one through three last week, as well as wide receivers. Yesterday, running backs four through six. Today, wide receivers four through six. Next week, Monday and Tuesday, we will cap it off seven through nine. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit irresponsibly hungover right now. And if you don't want to hear me talk about this, just skip past the intro. Just slide the thing till the bit about boop and you could listen to my fantasy football talk i just want to throw that out there so i don't get all the comments about like nick you look like death today like i already know please save it actually please comment it because it's good for the algorithm yesterday i went to mccarran park which is a park in brooklyn it was my friend's birthday or it's my friend's girlfriend's birthday so they're throwing a little party at the back now we just transitioned from brooklyn to boston so i pull up you know i'm like skirt you know what the problem is like i don't i don't drink wine often right like i don't know much about i don't know anything about wine other than like if you just drink it in a high quantity it's gonna get you pretty freaked up if i drink nine beers in a night i know i'm gonna be also pretty freaked up if if i drink seven margaritas like i'm gonna have a problem i'm gonna be a problem i'm gonna do regretful things with wine though like i don't i don't drink it enough to know my tolerance with it so we pull up at the back and it was like it took us like 45 50 minutes to get there so by the time we got off the l train i'm just trying to get there without like we weren't bringing stuff we didn't bring any booze so we had to resort to scavenging and stealing whoever's booze was there and there was just a shitload of wine so we got the pouring and before you know it means steve topped off a bottle of wine in like legitimately seven minutes i'm like dude this is not even affecting me it's not even impacting me oh you know what life tip 101 shout out to fb god for this one if you're confused by effect versus effect you know a or e you don't know which word to start it with just say impact fucking solves all your problems so this wine is not impacting me or so i thought so we ripped through the first bottle and then we take a second bottle and we rip through it. And you know, the thing about day drinking it, right now, to give you context, is probably 4.30 p.m. Right now, it's 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday. Never, ever record videos at 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday. You know what? I'm, I'm going to cut this this story off because y'all don't need to hear the rest of it. No one's listening to me anymore. Uh, I'm ready to get into the fantasy football stuff. And I'm, that's, that's why the fuck you guys are here. We're going to tuck our shirts in. We're going to stop yelling. I don't even think I'm capable of yelling today, to be honest with you, which is fantastic. Let's tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. And let's eat. All right, Nicholas, time to bring the energy, time to bring the noise. I feel like a farmer with my t shirt tucked into jeans. So thou shalt forever call me Farmer Nick. Must own wide receivers rounds four through six. There are a lot of guys in this range. This is like the primo. This is like inject wide receivers into your veins, into your fantasy teams in these middle rounds. You're wrapping up the early rounds with your running backs, okay? We're hammering running backs in rounds one through three. Rounds four, five, and six. And I would say rounds three can probably be wide receiver city as well. But rounds four, five, six is the meat of where you're getting your wide receivers. The ROI is juicy as a mother father so as i kind of mentioned with the running back video yesterday if melvin gordon or chris carson or leonard fournette who have their adp of round three fall into the fourth round that's who you're smashing right there for wide receivers the same thing can be said with dj moore the same thing can be said with adam thielen both of them have adps in the third round i've seen them drop into the fourth round quite often among the fourth round wide receivers per adp and i will link the adp in the description down below completely free to use thanks to four for four they gather all their adp through cbs espn ffpc best ball tens nfl yahoo so it's a really good source that's the most realistic to most fantasy football leagues in the fourth round we have odell we have juju we have calvin ridley we have aj brown and we have Cortland sutton however most of the drafts that i've been in there are two guys that I really like out of this selection. If we're not getting any of those other, you know, I take DJ Moore, I take Allen Robinson, I take Adam Thielen over all those guys every single time. But in the fourth round, Juju and AJ Brown make by far and away the most sense here. Everyone can keep yelling about AJ Brown's volume problem. 
But Corey Davis now just hit the pup. They have literally, literally nobody else to throw the ball to in Tennessee. Oh, his yards per reception numbers are going to come down. He can't average 20 yards per reception. Of course not. But you know what good players tend to do? They tend to take steps up year after year. They progress. They get better. And this is what we're going to see from A.J. Brown. The guy got 84 targets last year. He was the only fantasy wide receiver in the top 25 with fewer than 90 targets. He finished as the wide receiver 15. That's in half PPR. The standard scoring rankings, A.J. Brown finished as the wide receiver eight. This dude was the wide receiver eight in standard in his rookie year on 84 targets. There's a reason why his yards per reception number, why his yak numbers, why his efficiency numbers were so high. It's not because he was lucky. It's because he's really fucking good at football. You don't get a profile like this, a prospect profile, six foot, 226 pounds, a 90th percentile weight adjusted speed score, college target share, college yards per reception, breakout age, college dominator. Those 16 yards per reception tell me that he was a big time playmaker in college. He did that while he was running primarily from the slot. To average 16 yards per reception while primarily playing in the slot is a fucking miracle in itself. AJ Brown last year, number six in yards after the catch. Total yards after the catch, number six, despite being 43rd in total reception. The reason AJ Brown is so good is because he's so good with the ball in his hands. We tend to see these receivers take big steps up in their game in year two and in year three. 84 targets could easily turn into 115 or 120 targets. The numbers he's going to put up on 115, 110 targets are going to be astronomical. Third in the NFL in yards per reception last year. Second in yards per target. Second in yards per route run. Matt Harmon loves this dude from a reception perception standpoint, right? He ran a lot of his routes from the slots. So we're like, okay, can he operate as an alpha receiver on the outside? He was asked to do it a little bit at Ole Miss when DK Metcalf started to miss time, and he was fine doing it. But does that translate into the NFL? We've seen guys have trouble doing it on the outside in the NFL. He ran 88% of his routes as the X receiver last year, primarily outside. Matt Harmon said, on a separation level, in terms of wide receiver separation skills, A.J. Brown is a whole nother level above Anquan Bolden already because a lot of people compared the two. They think they're you know possession alpha type receivers in the same sense. A.J. Brown's already a better route runner than Anquan Bolden is. A.J. Brown is a big play, explosive play just waiting to happen with big alpha size. There is nobody else to compete for targets there in Tennessee. It's just, it's ridiculous. He didn't start getting real snaps until halfway through the season last year and still finish as a top 10 wide receiver in standard. The efficiency, sure, it's going to come down, but by how much? He's still going to average 15, 16 yards per reception because he's that damn good at football. So yes, we're not going to get 20, but 16 on 30 more targets We'll get the damn job done. The A.J. Brown slander stops there. So he is my must draft wide receiver in round four. I do like Juju. I don't think he has that high of a ceiling anymore, though, because we've seen Deontay Johnson kind of emerge. They draft Chase Claypool. We don't know if this offense is going to be whoop, very pass heavy with Ben coming back from the injury. I, th I think there's a, a path to see this Steelers offense not be very, very good in 2019 or 2020. And I think it might affect Juju. So A.J. Brown is actually the last wide receiver of the group going off the board in this round. He's 46 overall wide receiver, 17. There is no shot he's finishing below wide receiver 17 so not only are you getting his floor where you're drafting him but i think he has legit legit really really high upside re-signing Hill. the chemistry is already there we saw it at the end of the year so the fifth round is where things start to get very 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 interesting because you have guys like tyler lockett keenan allen robert woods dk metcalf for me this is a smash on robert woods i think lockett and keenan allen are both probably going to hover around a thousand yards maybe 1100 yards i don't think they have the ceiling same thing with dk metcalf Lockett and Metcalf are both going to be good. They're both going to be efficient because they have Russell Wilson throwing them the ball, but they cannibalize each other in terms of production over the course of the season. When it comes to Keenan Allen, man, I've, I've made this point before, but like how many yards can you realistically project Tyrod Taylor to throw for or Justin Herbert to throw for? The, the team is going to throw for probably combined like 3,500 passing yards, right? How much can Keenan Allen really monopolize in that offense? Like very best case scenario, his career high in terms of receiving yardage market share back in 2017, he had 30 0.6% of the receiving yards. That's less than a third. So if Tyrod throws for 3,500 yards, which I think honestly is probably like the upper limit of what we're going to see from him, this is going to be a probably a slow paced offense. So I'd cap it at 35. You give Keenan Allen a career high 30% of the share there. That comes out to about 1050. I think that's realistic. I think we're going to see between 1,000 and maybe 1,075 receiving yards for Allen. This is not 
a offense that dictates a lot of scoring opportunities. I'm going to pass on Allen here and we're going to go to Robert Woods because Robert Woods is still being violently slept on. Now, Robert Woods is one of my must draft guys in the draft guide, bigdogsdraftguide.com. It's got all of my must own players by position, wide receiver, running back, quarterback, tight end, the entire all fade list. Guys, we are not touching this year. Also by position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. It's got our full rankings, super flex, one quarterback, PPR, standard, half PPR. And the Bible dropped last week. It is precious. Here are some words that I've gotten about the Bible. So the easiest way to not ever have to prepare for your draft again is simply by getting the Big Dogs Draft Guide. $10, the easiest investment you will ever make. All you got to do is do what's on the screen. You head over to monkeyknifefight.com. You use the promo code BDGE. When you deposit $10, play a game of $2, and bam, you've got the season-long guide, the dynasty rookie guide, Dr. Morse's injury guide. It's all in there. It's the best value on the market right now. It's the best way to support the brand if you feel like you want to do so. If you feel like I'm giving you information, if you feel like I'm giving you value, please go cop the draft guide through monkeyknifefight.com. If you're in a state that's not eligible for Monkey Knife Fight, you can just cop it through bigdogsdraftguide.com. But let's talk about Robert Woods. Let's talk about why we love Mr. Bob. Why we love Bobby Woods. I'm taking the glasses off because honestly, I, I can't do this right now. 2019 led the team in catches 90, 140 targets. Damn, he had 140 targets. That is so many targets, y'all. I'm just, this is. This is ridiculous. I'm just realizing how many targets that really is. Robert Woods, 140 targets last year, 1,134 receiving yards, two touchdowns, 15 games played. What you love to see is that added 115 rushing yards on the ground the year prior was about 150. So he low-key throws another 100, 150 yards from scrimmage on top of whatever receiving total he has. That's why I love it because you don't look at Robert Woods as a ceiling player. You look at him as a floor player, right? And you're kind of mixing him up with the Keenan Allens, the Tyler Lockett's, those guys who you're like, yeah, they'll probably go for 1,000 yards, 1,100 yards. So will Robert Woods through the air, but he pads you with an extra 10 to 15 rushing yards per game on top of that. So while he might finish with like 1,100, 1,150 receiving yards, he's going to be close to that 13 to 1,400 yard from scrimmage season. And you look at the way the Rams finished last year, and it's the way I think they're going to approach this upcoming season. You probably heard this narrative many times. I'm going to continue to fucking hammer it into your ear holes, okay? Over the second half of last season, after their bye, I think it was week nine or whatever, right? Cooper Cup had that monster opening start to the year, and then he kind of faded away. The reason he did that was because their offensive line was so bad, they needed to add an extra blocker. You do that by switching to 12 personnel. 12 personnel dictates two tight ends being on the field. So you have the two tight ends, you got the running back, kids, close your eyes at home, and you got the two wide receivers on the outside, okay? So that means Cooper Cup is not running full-time from the slot anymore, which is where he does most of his damage. He's not that good of a receiver on the outside, which is why we saw Tyler Higby, which is why we saw Robert Woods start to become the alpha in that LA offense. From weeks one through eight, Cooper Cup ran 75.3% of his routes from the slot. The second half of the season, that number dropped down to 57%. Over the last two seasons, when Cooper Cup runs from the slot versus outside his yards per route run one of the more predictive measures that we have in fantasy football of successful wide receivers his yards per route run dropped from an elite 2.32 in the slot down to 1.76 on the outside that's a huge drop off in that number in that statistic and we also saw him play 10 percent fewer snaps so that's that's why we're starting to go with woods over cooper cup here but when you look at what robert woods actually did over the second half and what we can probably predict him to do next year because i think this offensive line is still going to be bad and they're going to have to play this way robert woods was a monster over the second half of the year from weeks 10 through 17 he was the wide receiver six overall in fantasy, and he missed the game. Wide receiver three in fantasy points per game over that span. He was the true alpha in Hollywood. 15 and a half half PPR points per game over the second half. 19.2 PPR points per game. Look at the targets per game there. 11.4. That is ridiculous. And that was while he wasn't scoring touchdowns. I mean, like, listen, I'm not a huge proponent of just looking at touchdown rate and being like, oh, it's going to go up or down based on the touchdown rate and his historical meet. Like, you have to put context behind it, right? Everyone's yelling about how Leonard Fournette's touchdowns are going to go up. But, like, if their team fucking stinks and they're never on the goal line, why do we think his touchdown numbers are going to go up? If he doesn't have the opportunity to do so, if you only have eight goal line carries in the year and rank outside of the top 15 at the running back position and your team will not fucking dictate you being on the goal line often, why is your touchdown rate going to go up? Know your role, Leonard Fournette. Anyways, Robert Woods. Robert Woods scored two touchdowns on 140 targets, a 1.3% touchdown rate. Up to this point in his career, Woods has scored on 4.1% of his target, over three times more likely to have scored a touchdown in every other year besides last year. Since he's moved over to LA, his touchdown rate has been 5.1%. That's nearly four times higher than what he did last year. And here's a real big 
big fikes for you. Since the year 2000, I'm just going to read this shit right off to you. Since the year 2000, there have been 220 wide receivers that have seen 140 targets or more in a season. 220 that have seen 140 targets or more. Robert Woods is one of five out of 220 that brought in two touchdowns or fewer. Of the remaining four, they all scored at least five receiving touchdowns in the following season. Robert Woods is going to have a floor of five touchdowns this season. We can't predict touchdowns, but we know that number is going to go up. I would say he's probably going to be closer to seven or eight touchdowns. 140 targets, 1,300 yards from scrimmage, seven or eight touchdowns. Bobby Trees, smoke him up in 2020. Must draft player in round five. Now, 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 now. Round six, two of my favorite players in the entire world. Now, they are round six per this ADP. So technically, I can shove them into here, but you might have to grab them in round five. And I think they're right up there with Robert Woods. To be honest with you, that is DJ Chark. That is Terry McLaurin. Young studs on teams that are going to have to pass the ball a lot because they are not going to be good teams. We want to talk about Leonard Fournette's going to be fucking scoring touchdowns over here. They're going to have to pass 700 times. And DJ Chark is going to be the beneficiary of that. Let's break these these guys down one by one. And please don't ask me which one you, you should draft because honestly, I can't I can't make up my mind. I've been going back and forth. And if I'm in multiple drafts, I'm going to be splitting the picks up. One draft, I'll take Chark here. One draft, I'll take Terry McLaurin here. I will say, though, recently, my love for Terry has not wavered. It will never waver. But I've been very enticed by DJ Chark. He is alluring me. He is swooning me. And I might start to move DJ Chark slowly ahead of Terry McLaurin. Chark had his breakout season in his second year after doing almost nothing in his rookie season. Plays in 15 games, catches 73 passes, 118 targets, eclipses the 1,000-yard receiving mark, gets into pay dirt eight times, finishing as the wide receiver 17 in half PPR. When you look at his talent profile, I mean, it was only a matter of time before he broke out and, and, you know, cracked fantasy lineups. 6'3", 200 pounds. 4-3-4, 40-yard dash. Burst, speed, long speed. They almost needed to make a second player profiler page for him to fit on there. He has legitimate field stretching size. He has legitimate speed that makes him a big play threat at any point. Last year, he had 17 receptions of 20 plus yards. He only played in 15 games. So that's over one 20-yard reception per game. What I love most about this, man, and you've heard me make this comparison before, DJ Chark's third year could be very similar to AJ Green's second season. Probably not as statistically high in terms of the ceiling, but I think we're going to see a light version of that. And the reasoning is because Jay Gruden's coming over as the offensive coordinator. Jay Gruden has served as the OC once in his life, or one stint. It was the three years in Cincinnati from 2011 to 2013. AJ Green's first three years in the league were 2011 to 2013, three of his probably best years in the NFL at that point. I think Jay Gruden who's already talked about this, using DJ Chark in a very similar role to AJ Green. They're very similar players. They're long, they're lean, they can get up, they can go downfield, they can make plays anywhere on the field, okay? DJ Chark is in, is an athlete in the same build as AJ Green is, and we've already seen Jay Gruden use AJ Green to perfection. You look at the stats of what AJ Green did in his rookie year and what DJ Chark did in his second year last year, they are scary similar, and we're going to see a jump up from DJ Chark in a major, major way. He got hurt midway through the year last year. I think it was maybe an ankle injury or something. But prior to this ankle injury, this dude was a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. If you picked him up in the beginning of the year, he was you were literally riding him to dubs. And why this matches up so perfectly in this Jacksonville offense is, again, they're the lowest win total team per Vegas right now. I believe they have him at maybe four games, four wins, which means Minshew is going to throw up another 650 to 700 passes this year. And Minshew, his game, although he doesn't have like the big arm, the throw velocity that you like to see off the chart, Minshew was deadly accurate on deep balls last year. Fifth highest completion rate on deep passes last year, 45.1%. Did not have a single turnover worthy throw on deep balls per PFF and was the second highest graded deep passer in the NFL last year per PFF. In last video, we talked about why Allen Robinson is a good bet to still see 150 targets because when you're in the slot, you command a lot of targets. It's the easiest mismatch. And they've come out and said that DJ Chark is going to be used all over the field, including in the slot. So DJ Chark is not a one-trick pony. He's not just a deep guy. Going back to college, he had multiple punt returns for touchdowns. We like to see the dynamism, as some people in the industry like to call it. We like to see him making plays all over the place, right? It tells you that he can be used in many situations, and he can actually verifiably be used in the slot. I couldn't be more high on DJ Chark this year. I own him in a lot of my dynasty leagues, and I'm fucking pumped about it. Because this kid is 23 years old, coming off his breakout season, set up to smash in 2020. He's an absolute must-own mid-round wide receiver, along with the homie Terry McLaurin. Let's talk about Terry. Let's talk about Terry, baby. Let's talk about why he's a must-own after round three. 
So Terry played in only 14 games last year. 93 targets, 58 catches, 919 receiving yards, seven touchdowns. Easily goes over that elusive thousand yard rookie receiving mark had he played in the full 16 games. Looking at his prospect profile is so underrated. This is a fantastic prospect profile. Six foot, 210. He is not small. I think people think he's small. I think people think he's Deshaun Jackson S because he has that deep speed, 4 3 5 speed, the real game breaking type speed that we saw multiple times last year. You know, he was catching 70 yard touchdown passes like it was his fucking job because it literally was his job. Six foot 210. Again, we talked about Bobby Trees, man. He reminds me of a possession receiver like Robert Woods with 4-3-5 speed. Terry McLaurin doesn't remind me of Deshaun Jackson. He, he kind of reminds me of Mike Wallace, but I think he's a, a real wide receiver one. I think he's an offense in which you could build your passing game around. He was bodying some of the top cornerbacks in the NFL last year as a rookie. And we brought up the reception perception from Matt Harmon. He couldn't have had a better season than what Terry McLaurin put up last year. Top six rookie season success rate versus man coverage scores. Terry McLaurin number four, only behind Odell, Tyler Lockett, Calvin Ridley. Top 35 wide receiver seasons that he has charted in reception perception, success rate versus man coverage of all time. Terry McLaurin on there, number 34. Look at the other names on that damn list. Per PFF, the single highest graded rookie since Michael Thomas in 2016. Terry McLaurin led the NFL last year in contested catch rate. Not He didn't lead rookies. He didn't lead tight ends. He led the NFL with the highest contested catch rate, which is phenomenal because when you got a guy like Dwayne Haskins throwing you the ball, it's not going to throw the ball into open windows for you. You have to be really good in tight space, and you have to be able to make those contested catches. Terry McLaurin has shown us that he could do that. So he's an excellent route runner, and he's got like 25 pounds on Deshaun Jackson while having Deshaun Jackson, Jackson-esque speed. The best part about this is they, just like A.J. Brown, they don't have anyone else to throw to in that offense. We wanted to look at, you know, Kelvin Harmon taking a step up or some shit. Kelvin Harmon's gone for the year. He's on the IR. He's done. It's only him and Antonio Gandy-Golden. This is Terry McLaurin's entire offense. It's going to be fun to watch an offense run entirely through Terry. The question about Terry is not Terry's talent. I know that. I could sit here and spew about all the good stats that Terry put up last year. It's about Dwayne Haskins. Everyone knows that. Will he take a step up? I am in the group that we should give him more time to see what he really is because down the stretch, Haskins got better and he put up good numbers over the last few games of the season. You saw improvement. Now we've got Ron Rivera coming over as a head coach and he, in the offseason, compared Terry McLaurin to DJ Moore. And you love... You love to see that because DJ Moore is a guy who, if he played in the full 16 games last year, would have paced out to 150 targets. Terry McLaurin is going to see a scary high number of targets this year. So even if they're not all valuable because they're coming from Dwayne Haskins, he's still going to ball out because the volume is just too high not to. Give me a guy who's going to get 140 targets and a lot of them are going to be downfield. On any given week, this dude could bust out for the 65, 70 yard touchdown and win you your week. That is in his range of outcomes on a weekly basis. And his floor is going to be really high because the target number is going to be ridiculously high. Terry McLaurin for president in 2020, in 2024, let's change the fucking rule and get it switched so that you can have three terms and let's fucking triple down on Terry. 2028 as well. Terry for president, 2020. Let's make it happen. Also want to give a quick, quick shout out to draftnowfantasy.com. If y'all are getting your leagues together soon, you're probably drafting very soon. Draft Now Fantasy is where y'all should be going to get your league gear. I'm talking about draft boards, live draft boards. I'm talking about these beautiful trophies. Come on, man. You want to have something to show off if you win your league. It don't get better than these Lombardi trophies. They've got a beautiful draft kit. Comes with the board, the player stickers, the trophy, as well as that thing that says you suck at fantasy football so your loser can wear it to the draft. It is one kit. Everybody throws in $5 to get it. Everyone in your league. And boom, you've got it. You can throw in $4. You know why? Because if you use the promo code BDGE on draftnowfantasy.com, you're getting 10% off plus free shipping. Second best deal in the world behind the big dogs draft guide through monkeyknifefight.com but this is damn close draftnowfantasy.com get your draft board kit 10 percent off and free shipping with promo code bdge we're doing the giveaway the giveaway winners from yesterday's comment section will be down below okay we gave away five free draft boards from draftnowfantasy.com from yesterday's video in the comment section pinned if you are one of them please reply to the comment with your email and I will get y'all hooked up with the draft board. DraftNowFantasy.com. So that's all I got for y'all today. Thank you for sticking through me. Like that's that that's a fitting ending. Thank you for sticking through this with me. While it feels like something was sticking through me while I was making this video. I've got nothing but love for you guys and all of the support that you always bring to the channel. 
and to the brand man if you are not already following myself on these other social platforms please go do so if you enjoyed the video you got some informational value from it make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're new i think it's over there yeah it's down there because we'll be doing fantasy football content literally every day every single day you'll come back and get some bullshit like this and make sure to cop the draft guide monkeyknifefight.com promo code bdge when you deposit 10 bucks and play a game on there and i will email you access a few hours later i love you i'm out i'll see you tomorrow on bunk bed breakdowns